do you believe that the term you just said that terrorism is in the eye of the beholder and i i agree completely uh it's the the uh, the, the the attack on civilians for political purpose and it w w I mean, if you're like an Iraqi child in 2003, you're not going to look up and see drones flying overhead and think, ah, well, at least they're doing it flying a nation's flag, you know? So obviously the sort of the semantic difference between what constitutes a terrorist attack and what constitutes like state sanctioned terror, what's just an act of war, it gets very fuzzy and it feels like it's only really relevant from a distance when up close the outcomes feel very similar. Do you think the term terrorism um, is useful socio-politically at describing a particular type of behavior, or do you feel it is frequently coded to refer only to some groups to deliberately delegitimize their violence, but not as much to other groups um, to sort of preserve a, a veneer of legitimacy to their violence? Damn, another tough question. The, the, the bottom line is, is that there is no consensus of what terrorism means. So there, a colleague of mine who's in, uh, named Alex Schmidt, uh, he and I are both associated with the International Center for Counterterrorism in The Hague. He wrote a paper years ago in which he combed the world's um, legal codes and academic work, et cetera, to come up with a definition of terrorism. And I believe he stopped counting at 200. <laughs> so, so there are 200 definitions of terrorism. Even my own country, Canada, does not define terrorism in our criminal code. We define terrorist activity, not terrorism. And I think that's because they, we just couldn't come up with an easy definition. I think the term has become uh, highly problematic. Certainly, people are called terrorists for all kinds of reasons. You've already alluded to them. And if you're a young Iraqi child, do you really care whether your family was just killed by ISIS or an American drone? No, you don't. And you're going to probably want to seek revenge or some kind of justice or whatever down the road for the fact that someone violently took your family away from you. The, the niceties of whether it was terrorist or freedom fighter or whatever, you don't care kind of thing. We are well beyond the point, I, although uh, I fear, where we can stop talking about terrorism. Let's face it, I, and I use this term a lot, we live in a post-9-11 world. If 9-11 had not occurred, I, I feel very strongly a couple of things. One, we wouldn't have 100,000 terrorism experts because they wouldn't give a shit about it. It would be a niche thing for academics. Prior to 9-11, 10 people cared about terrorism in academia. Now there are tens of thousands. Uh, secondly, is that the public wouldn't be so um, both uh, enthralled by it as well as deathly afraid of it because we hear about terrorism on a daily basis. I, one thing I do in my so-called retirement is I just monitor the world's news and I, I tweet out about terrorist attacks. And I can assure you on any given day, I'm tweeting between five and 10 attacks a day somewhere in the world. I'm not saying this is all a product of 9-11, it's not, but the way we look at terrorism has been informed on what happened on that September day in 2001. That, that's just the, the era we live in. The same way you could talk about, you know, the post-World War II era or the post-Cold War era. I was part of that too when I worked in intelligence, very different time. So we can't stop talking about terrorism because it's, it's just too ubiquitous. It's just too much around us. And too many people are looking at it, tweeting about it like me and writing books about it and articles, et cetera, et cetera. What we, I think what we have to start doing though is start to ask ourselves, what do we really mean by it? And, and to me, uh, the definition that we use here in Canada for what is an act of terrorism is, it, is a serious act of violence. So it has to be violent in nature. And it has to be something that's planned and or carried out for political, religious, or ideological reasons. That's what the Canadian Criminal Code says in section 83.01. Now, that is already problematic. What does political mean? You would argue that the Bush administration decision to invade Iraq was political, and it was serious violence, ergo it was terrorism. I don't see this as a solution to our problem, but I do think we have to start looking at what it is we really mean by labeling one person a terrorist and another person not. And I'm not, look, at, I didn't fall off the turnip truck yesterday. I have no Ill illusions. You and I are gonna resolve this today or anytime soon, but at least we have to start having the conversation because the way that we're looking at it now uh, is unhelpful at a minimum, and you could argue is exacerbating the problem at the other end.